Cherish this moment, hit like and subscribe for more. How do you visualize the world map? Do you know about different map projections? If you close your eyes and picture our planet, what do you see? Chances are you're visualizing it based on the Mercator projection, a view we're all too familiar with from countless classroom posters and online maps. What's fascinating though, is how this image of our world is not a perfect reflection of reality, but a distorted representation molded by the specifics of the Mercator projection. This projection, like all others, is a product of human ingenuity, a tool to translate the globular complexity of our Earth onto flat surfaces. However, it's important to remember that different projections highlight different aspects of our world and can subtly influence our perception of geography and geopolitics. Different map projections can change how we see the world drastically. Let's delve into a few of them. The Mercator projection, the map you're probably most familiar with, was created for sea navigation. Its design allows sailors to plot a course using straight lines, known as rum lines, a feature that was revolutionary in the 16th century when the map was first introduced. This makes the Mercator projection invaluable for sea navigation even to this day. However, as you move further from the equator towards the poles, the Mercator projection begins to distort. This distortion results in an exaggerated representation of land masses. Greenland, for instance, appears the same size as Africa, when in reality, Africa is about 14 times larger. This distortion can give a skewed perception of our world, inflating the size of developed nations in the Northern Hemisphere, while diminishing those near the equator. So, while the Mercator is excellent for sea navigation, it might not give the most accurate representation of our world's land masses. The Peters projection, on the other hand, aims to represent the size of countries accurately. This projection, developed by Arno Peters in the mid-20th century, is a response to the distortions of the Mercator map, offering a more realistic portrayal of the world. Its most striking feature is the equal area representation, where each unit of area on the map corresponds to the same amount of area on the Earth's surface. This makes it particularly useful for understanding the real size and distribution of phenomena, like population density or natural resource allocation. However, every map projection comes with a trade-off. The Peters projection is no exception. While it excels in accurate size representation, it falls short in accurately portraying shapes, particularly near the poles. Here, countries and continents can appear elongated or stretched, distorting our perception of their true shape. Thus, the Peters projection, while presenting a more accurate representation of country sizes, may distort their true shape. The Robinson projection, a favorite among geographers, strikes a balance between size and shape. This projection, introduced by Arthur H. Robinson in 1963, was designed to provide a more realistic view of our world, with minimal distortion of both size and shape. The Robinson projection's main strength lies in its balanced representation. It offers a view that is neither too stretched nor too squished, enabling us to visualize countries and continents in a way that is closer to how we perceive them in reality. However, it's important to remember that no map projection can be completely accurate, and the Robinson is no exception. There is distortion around the poles and edges, causing these areas to appear smaller than they actually are. Additionally, distances aren't represented accurately, especially across the oceans. So, the Robinson projection, while not perfect, offers a more balanced view of the world. In conclusion, no single map projection can accurately represent the entire world. Each of them, whether it's the Mercator, the Peters or the Robinson, has its strengths and weaknesses, and they all bring something unique to the table. The Mercator projection, for instance, is fantastic for navigation due to its preservation of angles and shapes, but it tends to greatly exaggerate the size of regions closer to the poles. On the other hand, the Peters projection is a champion at showing equal areas, which is great for comparing sizes, but it distorts shapes in the process. And then there's the Robinson projection, a compromise between the two. It aims to balance area, shape and size, creating a more visually pleasing map that's somewhat closer to how we perceive our world. But it's not perfect either. Each projection has a purpose and is useful for different applications from navigation to education. So next time you look at a map, remember, it's just one view of our diverse and complex planet. Uh, thank you for watching and stay connected.